Hi everyone, and welcome to the 345 Podcast. I'm Henry, I'm Gordon, and I'm James, and today we'll be investigating whether or not James Bond is a Time Lord. I'll go out on a limb and say, not. Are you going to dump on every topic we pick? It's part of my charm. No, it isn't. Anyway, let's get on with it. James Bond and Doctor Who, two pop culture juggernauts that have been around for decades, whose lead character has been played by multiple actors. While there's an in-universe explanation for this in Doctor Who, there isn't one in James Bond. I've always found that strange. There's no Nothing strange about it, James. It's good old-fashioned pragmatism. Characters get recast all the time for a myriad of reasons. The original actor gets too old, they drop out, or the powers that be change them for the hell of it. True, but what if there's a more sci-fi explanation? For the uninitiated, Doctor Who is a British TV series about an alien adventurer from the planet Gallifrey. He's known simply as the Doctor, and he travels through time and space using a machine called the TARDIS. His species are called Time Lords. Why do you suppose that is? Why aren't they called Gallifreyans? I don't know, that's not important. Time Lords have this ability to cheat death. It's called regeneration, and it's triggered whenever they're dying. This process completely heals them, but it causes their physical appearance to change. Now, let's apply this to the world's most famous British spy. He's carried out some pretty dangerous missions in his time and suffered injuries for it. Could it be that some wounds were more serious than others? Perhaps this caused him to regenerate, and presto, we get a new Bond every so often. And I suppose Bond is also the Doctor? Of course not, that'd be stupid. He's another Time Lord called the Spy who was exiled from Gallifrey for some reason. He came to Earth seeking asylum, offering his services and his technology to the British government. Since it was at the height of the Cold War, they jumped at the chance to get one up on the Soviets. The Spy was assigned to MI6 where he was given the designation 007 and a new name, Bond. James Bond. You've spent a lot of time thinking about this, haven't you? Yep. But do you actually believe it? No. I know there's no overlap between the franchises whatsoever, but it's fun to theorize. Yes, that's true. And I must admit, your theory is... interesting. Which in your jargon means you think it's complete shite. You know me so well. Kid. Does anyone have anything further to add? Aye. I find it interesting that the first Bond film was called Doctor No. It came out in 1962. Then, in 1963, Doctor Who began on the BBC. Coincidence? I think, probably. So do I, but it is a strange one. Anyway, let's move on to the questions. How much time does it take on average for a non faceless engine to have a washdown, especially if they have high standards on their outward appearance? It depends on the size and state of the engine. Naturally, it takes more time to clean chaps like us than it would, say, Thomas or Percy. How dirty we are is also a factor. Like the time James got covered in tar, it took them nearly a week to get it all off. Thanks for reminding me of that. The standard of cleanliness is up to the workers and management, not us. Next question, what are your thoughts on faceless vehicles? Do you find it disturbing to watch a faceless steam engine smoke box get cleaned out? Not really. I don't know about you chaps, but I've never really given much thought to faceless vehicles. Neither have I. I certainly haven't. They're just there. And our final question, what is your biggest fear? Heights, spiders, chipmunks. We hope that answered your questions. Sound off down below if you have any more. Be sure to drop a like and a suggestion for a future topic. And that's all we've got for today. So until next time, stay awesome.